Hi gang, Scott Davenport here. In this video, we'll talk about the channel mixer filter in On One Photo Raw. Now this filter is an interesting one and it can get a little mind bending. I actually struggled a bit with how to approach this video. And so what I'll do is show you the use case that it's really tailor made for. It's infrared photography. So if you're not an infrared photographer, you can probably stop this video right now. Go watch one of my other on one videos and then learn some other uh, tool that will help you get your photos looking good. Because all the other things we can do with the channel mixer, we can also do more intuitively with other tools in Photo Raw. Nevertheless, I'll go through them all here. I'll explain what in principle the channel mixer is doing, the infrared use case, which is really what you want to use it for, and a couple of other things we can do with it. But uh, as you'll see in the rest of the video, if you do hang around, there is probably a different tool that you could reach for. Uh, anyway, if you enjoy videos like this, go ahead and hit subscribe. And if you're thinking about adding Photo Raw to your toolkit, check the show notes. There is an offer code down there. It will save you a little bit of money. So let's first walk through what the channel mixer is. What is this filter? What are its controls? Well, let me add the channel mixer to the filter stack and explain what this filter is doing, how it's arranged. We have our opacity. We have our styles, and I'll come back to the styles in a moment. We have output channels. This is what channel here. We have output channels, red, green, and blue. And all of our digital photos have red, green, and blue. We have different channels, as we call them, color channels, to push different tones out there. And by default, red is all red, green is all green, and blue is all blue. Now, within each output channel, we can change the mix, hence the name channel mixer, of what's going into this output channel. The thing about it is like this red, green, and blue, it's not like I want to add more green to the blue output channel. It's more biasing things. If you're familiar with the color curves, it kind of works the same way. If you're familiar with the color wheel, it's how it works. Like in the red channel, this is really a play of red versus green. If I push sliders to the right, I get more red. Even if I take you know, a green slider and I start pushing to the right, I'm not getting more green. I'm increasing the amount of red or I can decrease the amount of red and get green. Right? I can decrease the amount of red. Doesn't matter which slider I'm pulling on, I'm getting more green because ultimately this is a play against green versus red. So you can start to see some possibilities of doing some you know, color grading and so forth with these tools, but they are operating quite differently. They're really working with you know, more luminance values uh, as opposed to the colors themselves. The green channel is a play of green versus magenta. I'll just show that with a contrast. We can pull down, or constant I should say. We get more magenta, more green. And then blue is your play against blue to the right or yellow to the left. So using this tool to do color grading while possible is less intuitive than other tools we have like LUTs or Antique or yeah, even a photo filter with some of the controls there. It's easier to do color grading. Uh, but let me show you now why do we have this thing in the first place if it's so awkward to use. Uh, you know, Some classic use cases were black and white. I'll show you that in a moment here. The real key one is infrared. So let's get to the you know, why we really, really have this. It's infrared photography. So here is an infrared photo taken with a camera that was converted for black and white infrared. And the channel mixer has two styles right up front. This is your big key indicator, right? This is why we have this channel mixer. One click on black and white infrared, the sliders all change to this interesting mix of red and blue, really doing a lot of massaging of the red and blue channels for infrared. And we see that the color cast is gone, that uh, weird reddish tone is gone. The organic parts of the photo, so the, the grasses and the trees, the leaves and so forth, those things that we expect to be white and bright in an infrared photo, those are coming through that way. And from here I can go and continue on with, uh, with my processing. Now I don't have a color infrared photo, but just to show you what happens, you notice this IR swap, it's got a uh, you know just interesting little icon there, but it tells you kind of what's going on. In the red channel, for the output of the red channel, it's like, okay, take all the luminance from red and bring it down to zero, push blue to 100. 
Green doesn't change. That's the default. Blue is the opposite. It basically swapped the blue and the red. And if you have a color IR photo, you'll get the rough approximation of what you expect to see and then move on with your processing. So if you are doing infrared photography, this is what you want. You need that channel mixer so you can do a quick and easy swap of the red blue channels and with black and white it pushes things out a little bit farther but this is the real true purpose in my opinion of why the channel mixer is part of photo raw it opens up processing for your infrared photography and you just have the one click with either one of these styles another classic use case for the channel mixer is black and white conversions now the reality is we have the black and white filter in photo raw and that is a much richer more complete tool for doing black and white conversions. Nevertheless, we have black and white options in the channel mixer. I promised I'd show you some of these options, so here we go. And uh, the easiest way to work with those is again, go to the styles. We have blue, green, and red. And these simulate what we had in the physical world. If you ever did black and white photography and you have like a red filter, the kind you would actually put on the front of your lens to only let those wavelengths come through. Uh, let's choose red here. That looked pretty good. You'll notice in the blue, green, and red output channels, the only luminance set is for reds. Everything else has been nulled out. Similar for, let's choose blue. Well, you expect, what do you expect? Blue is there. And so this is a way of doing another type of black and white conversion. Perhaps it's more uh, akin to, you know, an old school look. So if you're trying to get one of those older looks where you did use physical filters in the actual real world, it's a way to do it. The way I like to use these previews, these styles, is to help with color mixing and get an idea of what are the luminance tones in a photo. So let me show you how I'll take these styles and then apply them forward to do a little bit of color grading. For a photo like this, it has a very healthy amount of green in it. We can instinctively see that, but I'll use the black and white styles here to take a look. And blue, for example, if the tone is very dark, that means there's very little blue, right? There's just not that much in there. So it's kind of like looking at a luminosity mask, but you're thinking about it in terms of color channels. Green, expected that. There's quite a bit of brightness here in the photo, and there's a lot of green in the photo. Red, pretty good amount of red as well. And so this is really dominated by red and green. And when I'm mixing colors, I can think about, let's say, there wasn't very much blue in this photo. Well, I can steal some green and add it in as blue, and I can start to get, you know, a steal a little bit of red. And really, I'm still biasing things red versus yellow. That's what these sliders will do for the blue output channel. But in the overall tones of the photo, it ends up with a, a pretty pleasing color grading because this photo already had a lot of green in it. So this is a way that you can do some color grading. I think it works for particular photos, but there are other easier ways to do color grading. We have the photo filter, we have LUTs, and you know, so those are more intuitive options for doing grading. Now, of course, you could also try to get very wild and just change the color of, say, the flower entirely by just starting to push these things all over the place. And, you know, maybe I want to make the flower a very strange blue looking thing. And uh, if I have the reds and I, I want to get more of that coming in here, whatever I might want to do. And then I could reach for a mask and start painting things around. You know, at that stage, you're talking about color replacement. And so why not use the replace color filter, right? That's a more intuitive, more easy way to do a color replacement. So uh, let me undo a couple of those things. I liked the, uh, the way that this type of grading looked where there wasn't very much blue in the photo to begin with. Remember that blue filter, not that much blue there. I can add some in and, you know, uh, air quotes, stealing it from other colors that are more prominent in the photo. So that is the channel mixer. To recap, if you're an infrared photographer, this is the tool that you want. You wanna add this filter to your stack, hit the IR swap or the black and white infrared style, 
and move on with the rest of your processing. You'll get the channel mix that you need to have your IR photo starting off right. Everything else, there are other tools in Photo Raw I might reach for first. I would not do a black and white conversion with the channel mixer filter. I'll use the black and white filter. Uh, for color grading, maybe. Depends on the photo. If the photo has a, an obvious natural color cast, like in the example I used where there was a deficiency in blue, not very much blue at all. That opens up an opportunity for some color grading, uh, you know, kind of you know, air quotes, stealing color from one of the output channels and adding it into another. Everything else, so you want to change the color of a particular element. Yeah, you can do that with the channel mixer, but there are other tools that make that easier, like the replace color filter. Anyway, hope you found this useful. Gives you an appreciation for what the channel mixer is, where it is useful, and some of the things you can do with it. Uh, go ahead and ask questions below if you got them. I'll do my best to answer it. This was a, a difficult video to put together, to be honest, because it's a complicated concept to try to explain, especially when the goal is get me a photo that's looking good. Uh, channel mixer has its place but it is not an end-all, be-all type of tool. There, there never is one, right? Anyway, hope you had a good time watching the video. You got other questions, go ahead and drop them below. I'll do my best. And until next time, my name's Scott Davenport. Have fun.